Welcome to Creative Live. My name is Chris Jennings, and today we are sitting down to talk a little bit about the state of the live streaming world. We are going to discuss some of the finer points and how this industry is growing and changing, and in particular, one app that's making a huge difference in that. It's Meerkat. So right here with me right now, we actually have Chase Jarvis, the co-founder and CEO of Creative Live, and someone who is no stranger to the world of live streaming video. So Chase, thank you all. for coming in here Thanks to so talk lot. to us today. Pleasure. I walked all the way from my desk, all the way across Creative Live office to sit yeah. down here. No, right we appreciate yeah. you making the trip in here. So I, I brought you in because you are obviously an expert in this. You have been there from the start of this industry. You have seen this grow over time. And I'm curious to just get your take on how we've gotten to this point now in the world of live streaming. Like, how have we gotten to this point? You've seen it evolve. What is sure. your take on this industry right now? Well, my take on live streaming is that it has completely transformed the internet. Um, Creative Live, the world's largest live streaming education company that we started here with Creative Live, was born from the earliest version of live streaming. Uh, we founded the company in 2010, shortly after a little company called Ustream made it possible to do this. And over the last four years, we've been broadcasting here at Creative Live, interacting with people from all over the world, literally every country, every month. And that, that trajectory of Creative Live and the trajectory of live streaming have sort of just been in parallel. And now we find ourselves today with all those same abilities right in our phone, specifically with Meerkat. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, you, you touched on it. It's kind of that perfect storm right now. Sure. We've gotten to the point where we have the technology, we have it being mobile, we can take it out on the go, and we have the speeds. I yes. think it took a while for us to get to the point where we had these fast mobile broadband. Now mm -hmm. we have the opportunity to be streaming wherever we are on the go, and it's going to change everything that we've known about live streaming. It's coming to a new form right now. And for the folks in the Creative Live audience, this is an amazing tool, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a tool to add to your sort of quiver of creativity, not just to to record things for yourself, but now we record things that are interactive where the people who pay attention to what it is that you do have a chance to interact where you can take them along, you can teach them something, you can let them behind the scenes, so to speak, is what we're, it's a very meta thing that we've got going on here, a class about Meerkat, and we'll be streaming on Meerkat here in the Exactly, not yes, this is a, a course about Meerkat. We're actually gonna be joined by the community director of Meerkat, Ryan Cooley, in just a little bit to give us some more insight into how the company has gotten to this point. But I know you've been one of the early users of Meerkat. Sure. You actually got to see this really take off at South by Southwest. You've been using it from day one. I'd love to get your take just on how this happened and this, this whole whirlwind of how this got going at South by Southwest. And I know sure. you were caught up in it. So what is your take on this Meerkat phenomenon? Well, I think it's more of a phenomenon. It's a real thing. It's here to stay. It's not going anywhere. Most recently at South by Southwest, we saw the, the, the company take off uh, the opportunity to tap into this live streaming, you, you mentioned phenomena. Mm -hmm. um, the technology that's underlying Meerkat is years, they've been working on it for a long time, for a couple years, so it's not something that's some little shell that some people cobble together. Uh, the folks at Meerkat have built a very, very robust data and analytics underneath the, the um, the, the user interface, and at South by Southwest, we saw that come to fruition in a crazy rapid mm -hmm. rapid pace. So uh, I went there on Tuesday, and it launched a, a day or so before then, <laughs> and I, I, I had it set up to send me notifications when my friends were joining, and my phone wouldn't shut up. It was like ding, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. You know, it reminded me of early Twitter, um, and just the fabric of South by was very, very different because I was able to bring people that were paying attention to me via Twitter and now Meerkat, because they are integrated pretty nicely, into the world that I was living at as a speaker at South by Southwest, mm -hmm. as a broadcaster, and also a consumer. I was able to follow other people that were paying attention, or that, that allowed me to pay attention to what they were doing, not just at South by Southwest, but across the world. So to watch that happen basically over the course of a handful of days was totally extraordinary, and I think it just underscores the power of, of live streaming mm -hmm. in a handheld device. Exactly, yeah. So you touched on your usage on this, but we have people out there who watch Creative Live who are all sorts of creators, makers, they're doing all sorts of things out there. How can this technology impact someone out there who's maybe just, they're painting, they're drawing, they're creating something, and they want to share it with the world? Like, how does something like this change the sure. whole paradigm for someone like that? Well, I can, you know, I'll, I'll give you some of my use cases. Yeah. I think when we hear from Ryan in just a second, he can talk about how the world's using it. But for me, it's a way to connect with other people who are doing the same thing I'm doing in the world. Mm -hmm. Other photographers, other entrepreneurs, people who are building businesses. Not just as a broadcast tool to say, hey, look at me, I'm in this cool thing, but to have a real relationship yeah, and to be able to bring people who might not otherwise have access. I think access is sort of the key component of what Meerkat does. Um, 
whether you're using that to build relationships, to build audience, or to just be able to interact with people who are like-minded, all that has become more effective now than ever before. So, and in real time, like there's not like you're recording a video and then posting it to YouTube and then having some comments trickle in over the course of the next few days, as we'll see when we start broadcasting, questions in real time on the fly, broadcasting your photo shoot, your client interaction, your, your learning process, your creative process, and, and to be able to interact with others is, uh, is next level stuff. Yeah, you touched on a good point there that there are really two experiences here, the actual viewing of it and then the broadcasting. Sure. So certain people are going to get different things yep. out of this app, but it, that's the beauty of it is that people can be out there experiencing things when they're not there and then sharing those experiences of themselves out there so they get a little bit of the best of both worlds. Yeah, there. and it's not an either or. Like I find right, myself a broadcaster, a creator, and also a consumer of, mm -hmm. of the, my peers and people that I admire online getting to go along with them into their worlds. And I think we should teach the people how to use the thing. What do you think? I think that would be excellent, yeah. Awesome. So we're going to bring Ryan Cooley up in just a moment. But if people out there are new to Creative Live, if you don't know anything about what we do here, obviously we know a bit about this space. Sure, sure. Yeah. We've been live streaming for four years. We're the world's largest live streaming education company. We bring you Pulitzer Prize winners, New York Times bestsellers, cutting edge entrepreneurs, and anyone in the world can learn for free while we're broadcasting in real time. And, um, we've been doing that, like I said, for four years. We've, we've uh, broadcast and our students have consumed more than two billion minutes of free. Oof, the billion. That's a, a lot. That's I a know. Lot. To hear that number, it is right. amazing. So uh, for folks who are new to the platform, welcome. Thanks for joining us. And we'll try and solve as many of your creative challenges as we can. If you're an aspiring entrepreneur or creative photographer, designer, we'll hope to be able to impress you with what we can offer on our platform. Absolutely. All right. Well, now we are ready to get into the nuts and bolts sure. of Meerkat. And we thought that it would be fantastic to bring someone from the Meerkat team in here to teach us a little bit more about it. So please welcome on Ryan Cooley, who is the community director at Meerkat. Come on up, Ryan. Up, Pleasure, hey. man. Thanks a lot. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. Hey. Good to have you. We are excited to learn from you and kind of give us a little bit of background on, yeah, thank you. on how we've gotten to this point from Meerkat from an insider's perspective. Uh, okay, well, should I start by talking about the launch, maybe? Yeah, Tell yeah. Us. I think that's it, a really it, interesting thing. Yeah, a lot of people think it's a very sexy story, but basically we launched Meerkat at the end of February, weeks before South by Southwest. Okay. We launched it on a platform called Product Hunt, which is a mm -hmm. community of people very interested in consumer tech. Oh, um, those guys, well, wow. great guys. Yeah, they're, they're awesome. Um, and so we knew that with a new medium like Live, when you're matching it with social, you need to have people that are a little bit more resilient and a little bit more savvy and like a little bit more willing to talk about it because it's it's not a new way to share photos with friends, right? Yeah. It's it's live video <laughs> on your phone that you're sharing with friends. It's yeah. a, it's kind of a fresh idea. Yeah. So we wanted to have people that were willing to talk about it, willing to give us feedback. We thought that the tech community would be a great place to start. So we started on Product Hunt, okay? We saw this really awesome dense community. People started to really love what we were doing. They immediately loved the brand, the Meerkat's kind of cute. <laughs> Uh, and they started experimenting with all these different ways to actually use live streaming in a social way. Uh -huh. So initially, we predicted two big use cases. We predicted that people would use it for breaking news, and we, pre we predicted that the news, the tech community, excuse me, would use it to interact with each other. Yep. And what we saw in the next two weeks was totally mind blowing. <laughs> okay. Those use cases and many more, I'm sure. Yeah, well, news is obvious, right? Yep. It doesn't require that much imagination, right? You're a reporter, you're live tweeting events anyway. Instead of live tweeting, you open your phone, you press a button, everybody that cares is already in there, and instead of reading 20 tweets a minute, they're watching a live video and they're participating in it and talking to you. So we did see that use case uh, come to fruition, uh, but we also saw several others that we could never have imagined, right? Yeah. So we saw people in the faith-based communities using it to sort of get the word out and, and bring people into the church that perhaps couldn't be there that day, right? Expand the audience. We saw major sports organizations using it mm -hmm. to bring fans into kind of behind the scenes. The locker room. I yeah, exactly, yeah. the locker room, the practices. And that's on a collegiate level, professional level, high school level. It, it runs the gamut, right? Um, we've also seen politicians use it, which is super, super, super interesting, especially now as we're moving toward the 2016 mm -hmm. presidential campaigns. Yep. Uh, they've been using it as a way to kind of circumvent the more traditional media channels and have this direct access to their constituents, yeah. right? That's raw and, and authentic and, and, and really not up for that much interpretation at that point, right? Because they're in full control. Yep. Uh, so we're seeing all sorts of interesting use cases and now 
we're trying to work with everybody that's engaging in those use cases and, and find out why they love it and how we can make the product better for them. Speaking of product, maybe we can talk a little bit more about the product and go Let's right into Let's get into, into it. Yeah, I mean, we, we have your phone here ready to get into it. And we have someone from Meerkat who can show us everything that we need to know. Oh, sure, so let's sure. just have Ryan get right into it. So we got this tethered right now going out to the world. So let's just look at the UI from a very, very top line level. Um, talk to me about the features and the buttons and the sure. things that you find valuable. And then partway through this thing, I'm going to actually hit stream because I scheduled a stream Great. about... Uh, are we, on, are we on time? We're late. We're late? <laughs> it's okay, though. It's we'll, okay. I'll talk about it. You have 15 minutes after you scheduled the stream to actually go live. Great. There you go. We're so inside of five minutes. We're going to use that, that time. So um, you want to walk us through the interface here? Talk to me. Yeah. So when you open the app, it says Meerkat Tweet Live Video, right? Mm -hmm. It's very straightforward. We are tightly integrated with Twitter for now. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, and we wanted to create a product that was just totally complementary to the way that people were already using Twitter. Yep. Our visions are actually fairly aligned, right? right? We want to reduce all of these physical barriers that prohibit us from kind of conversing in real time yep. and sharing experiences. Great. So we said, we don't need much. We need two buttons. We need one to allow people to stream, right? And we need one to allow people to schedule so that if they have cool events that are coming up, they can kind of garner an audience beforehand. Great. Uh, we didn't want to make it overly complicated. We didn't need the design to be overly sexy. We needed people to understand exactly what the app did from the first moment that they opened the app. I love right? that. Love the simplicity. It, if yeah. people don't understand the product, then it's never going to succeed. Right. So when you open the app, you're looking at basically those two buttons, and if you schedule something, or if you're able, there's a there's a line that says what's happening. Yeah, you can, you can open like, it. Up. You can type type something right now. We won't actually schedule it. Sure. Um, with Ryan. Oops, I can't even spell with Ryan. From Meerkat. There you go. And I could either hit stream right now, and that would go out to the. So if you're here with me now, you can hit stream right now, and that will go out. Yep. Uh, or you can schedule it for up to 24 hours in advance. Mm -hmm. Got it. Right. Got we, it. We, we, we feel that since when you schedule, a tweet gets pushed out, uh, the tweet will 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 fall in the queue any anywhere past 24 hours. So Got we want to keep it relevant, but we want to give you the amount of time that you need to let your audience know that you'll mm -hmm. be doing something cool. Got it. And then just a couple of the buttons up top. I think this is this would be, say, my profile, this for is, example. This is your profile, yes. Mm -hmm. So this is, I'm, I've am i checked and followed Meerkat on Twitter. I'm ending my tweets with, with hashtag, hashtag Meerkat, Meerkat, trying to share the share the love and let people know what it is that I'm, I'm doing. So we can talk about that for a second Great. if you want. So anytime that you start streaming or you schedule a stream, a tweet is pushed out on your behalf, right, as, yep. as mm -hmm. you know. Yep. Um, and we wanted to give people full control over the content of the tweet. Yep. The one thing that we have to include in there is the link so that everybody can watch on the web if they yes. don't have the app. Uh, but we, we gave you the option of taking hashtag Meerkat out. Just, it was it originally maybe done in vain, but we want to give you full control over the, <laughs> no, the tweet no, itself. Our, our felt gratitude. I'm, I'm always happy to do it. So again, this uh, talk to me about how the following and followers work. It's pretty traditional across social media, but talk to me about the, how, how Meerkat thinks about it. Sure. So we didn't want to create a robust profile because Meerkat, the app itself, is not the place for you to cultivate your identity. Uh -huh. It's in the stream where yeah, you cultivate sure. your identity. So it's it's dead simple. We show you who you're following. We show you who follows you on Meerkat. And we give you those two options that we just discussed. There's there's no photo. There's no bio. There's none of that. Great. Um, we don't feel a need for it because as soon as you press stream, that's how you're going to represent yourself. That's exactly. beautiful. Now we'll go back, and there, there's one other basically button, and that is yes, we the have leaderboard. The leaderboard. leaderboard. And which I found out, I fell off the leaderboard ah. this morning, right before we were going to podcast. <laughs> oh no, really? <laughs> we'll get you back up. You'll right. get back up. Uh, by the end of this, I promise you, you're going to be on the leaderboard. Oh, All right, that's great. That's great. <laughs> uh, no, I, it was. It did. There's the gamification. I yeah. was very passionate to be in the you know the top 20 users. Sure. Uh, through the course of the South by launch that you guys had. But in short, this is, uh, talk to us about, so these are users, and then you've got a score, and, and talk to us about the score for a second. Yeah, so since there's not a whole lot of discovery, at least in the first version of the app, we wanted to give one way for users to figure out who was doing cool things. Uh -huh. uh, so what we did is we decided to apply a score to different actions in the app that were indicative of whether or not what you were doing was cool. Yes. There's three ways that you can that you can garner a good score. Okay. Okay. The first is you can schedule a stream and you can get subscribers, and each subscriber is worth a certain number of points. Okay. Great. All right. The second is engagement in the stream itself. Okay. Not just watchers, right? We actually think that watchers should be kind of peripheral to this this score uh -huh. because what we've created is really all about conversation. It's not just about content. So we're not about views. We're about how engaged people are in the stream itself. Great. 
So the more comments and retweets and favorites that you get from the stream, that'll increase your score as well. Great. Well, shall we dive into there's, it? Yeah, there's one more thing. One though. more thing. There's always one more thing. Are you there's Steve Jobs? What is this? There's one more thing. <laughs> So uh, w when you do go live and the tweet does get pushed out, all the watchers that you have coming in from the web that weren't watching from the app, each one of them is, is also worth a, a number of points. Cool. Yeah. All right, so should I just go back to stream or do you think I should leave that little, that little nubbin in there? Yeah, so I'll, I'll explain it. Basically, um, before I'm you I'm right on my window of 15 minutes. Should before you are? I am. We're on the 15th minute. Should we go for it? Oh, then we should go for it. Okay. So, I, yeah, should, I should mention that when you schedule, if you go live 15 minutes before the scheduled time or 15 minutes after, you're still good. Your followers Sweet. will all get subscribed. All right. So you get to see the <laughs> interface here. Now you're looking at our behind the scenes crew. Uh -huh. Cool. Okay. There we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to restream you through Meerkat. Great. So, hello, Meerkat friends. Uh, I'm Chase Jarvis, broadcasting from Creative Live, and I'm sitting here with Ryan Cooley from Meerkat. He's the director of community. And then there's Chris Jennings over there. Hello there. Host here at Creative Live. And we are talking Meerkat, actually. We're, we're trying to, I mean, it's a very simple, very, very uh, clean interface. And so you should be able to figure it out overnight, but we're trying to let you in on this little secret. It's like what we just heard a few seconds ago about how the score is calculated. Do you want to come back and talk to us about that? About the score? Sure. Yeah, sure. So a lot of people ask about the score. There's three ways that you can increase your score. One, schedule every stream that you know you're going to be streaming, right? Sometimes you have these cool spontaneous moments that you don't, but if you do, schedule because every subscriber is worth a certain number of points. Schedule. Yeah. Schedule. Uh, two, all your watchers from the web that uh, don't necessarily have the app and are coming in through Twitter and then watching it on the web they're all worth a certain number of points as well, right? So kudos for evangelizing the app to the people that don't have Evangelize it. the app, take <laughs> notes. And we'll get to your questions in a second. In the meantime, maybe you can tell us where you're tuning in from. Uh, you can like this stream, you can share it with your friends. Back to you, keep, keep giving us the scorecard. Okay, and the third way is you can get real genuine engagement in your stream. And we're not talking about watchers, we're talking about comments, we're talking about retweets, and we're talking about favorites, because that's really what demonstrates the value of Meerkat, which is a place to press a button and then bring everybody into a room to have a conversation, right? That's awesome. the way. And that's what's happening right now. Uh, there, I'm getting folks from all over the world saying, this is awesome, hello. Um, hi from Amsterdam. Amsterdam, awesome sauce. <laughs> um, 71 people. Wow. 71 Woo. people watching from all cool. over the world. So, um, it, yeah, it's pretty cool, right? Yeah, <laughs> sweet. Worcester, <laughs> Massachusetts, there we go. That's Worcester. where I went to school. All right. Worcester, Worcester. Tennessee. Again, so... Um, we're we're broadcasting, and you get to see all the people who are tuning in live via this little uh, line of faces, this face pile up there. Sure. Talk to us about that. Can I can I see people's profiles under there? Yeah. So every every little avatar that you tap, you're going to see right now. It's their Twitter bio and and their Twitter avatar. Um, we wanted to make sure that there was a real sense of presence in all of the streams. Uh, so that's why you're fully accountable when you're in the stream. Mm -hmm. Your name is attached to it, your Twitter handle is so attached to nice, it. Be nice, be gentle, don't <laughs> talk about my, the circles under my eyes from staying out too late last night. <laughs> exactly, right? And that's why we also don't have a, a, a way to really watch these videos anonymously. Um, we want to keep we want to keep the conversation going, we want to keep it participatory. That's good. Because that's right. really what it's all about. Like we're, we're not another place to go uh, watch video on demand or even just watch broadcasted live video. We're a place to go participate because we really kind of believe that the future of social media is in participatory media. Mm -hmm. It's in everybody in that room contributing yeah. to the content that's being consumed. So these people here are talking to us right Seen now. Brazil, New York, Sweden. Sweden. That's right. Shout out to Ooh. Sweden. Uh, Coachella, DC, <laughs> Brooklyn, Brazil. Oh, Coachella, I'm jealous. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm here with you instead of being backstage at Coachella. Yeah. I'm happy about it. Uh, so the point is, Everybody in the stream is contributing to our conversation, so what they're watching is actually is actually a, a culmination of them and us mm -hmm. together, right? We just initiated the stream. They're here to kind of direct it, so we're more the actors and they're the directors. Yeah, and, and there's an, a, a beautiful little meta layer here that if you're just now joining us, I'm Chase Jarvis, the co-founder and CEO of Creative Live, and Creative Live is the world's largest live streaming education company, so this is super baked into our DNA when you, you, you know, we were talking before we started broadcasting about, okay, that we were looking for interactivity, and you didn't have to tell anybody in the building because we're, we're sort of born on mm -hmm. that, and, and the Great. opportunity to educate folks 
and not just have that be a broadcast, but be a two-way conversation. So whether you're in Nairobi or Nebraska or Brooklyn or Worcester, Mass, yeah, you can uh, you can <laughs> you ask yeah you can ask questions. And so I don't know, did you have an agenda you wanted to talk about a, a couple of things like use cases and yeah. stuff, Chris? Yeah, I mean, as we get through this, we mentioned a couple of use cases. You know, celebrities, politicians, education, like we're doing right now. I mean, I'm curious to hear Ryan a little bit more about where you see this going, the future, some predictions. I mean, we talked a little bit about we have this ma magnificent technology in the form of a phone, but we also have things like smartwatches and wearable technology and other video streaming devices coming. I just want to hear your thoughts on where you think this is going. I know it's all guesswork at this point, but where do you see this going in the next stage of Meerkat? Sure. Well, first, let's talk about education. Sure. Right. Sure. Uh, never before have we seen a way that First, we all have internet-connected cameras yep. in our pockets, yep. right? That changes everything. We all have a local network infrastructure that will support streaming from pretty much anywhere, right? Unless you're in Antarctica or, or right. wherever. And we're also in an age where people are used to less polished, more authentic content, right? Yes. They want something that's real. They want to cut out the they want to cut out the filters and they want to cut out the the polish when it comes to social media. I mean, there's still there's still formats and platforms for for the beautiful, right? Yep. Um, that's not necessarily what we're about. We're about the, the interaction, the communication. So, I don't know. You look pretty beautiful. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> yes. So uh, point being, like, we see a, an amazing use case here for education. We have this, this guy on the platform that goes by Digital Jeff, and every single day at the same time, he does Photoshop tutorials, right? Cool. And he's just doing it from his home, and he, he gets a pretty decent audience now. Originally, it was just a couple people watching. Now it's far more. <laughs> And what's cool about this, and having studied photography myself, and, and just sort of going through YouTube videos hour after hour after hour, trying to figure out what was happening, going back in the video and trying to look at what they were doing again and again, what's different about Digital Jeff is people are asking Digital Jeff what they need to know, and then they're getting an answer right there. So the, it's like a class that's tailored to them. It's like an actual participatory class where they're learning everything that they want and nothing that they don't just as a result of this little internet connected camera in their pocket. And the question, like that's a natural segue maybe to some questions, because I've seen them coming in. They're people, coming in. People are talking about um, uh, the, uh, the account that is attached to Meerkat on Twitter. Like what's the relationship there? I, heard, I saw a question about that. Can you talk to us about that? Needs to be able to, to what was it? Switch. Yeah, can you switch user accounts to be able to be broadcasting? Yeah, you should be able to switch between any account that you have mm -hmm. attached to your iOS device. So please, if, uh, if you're not able to do that, get in touch with me and we'll give you my details at the end. And that's a bug, OK? You should be able to have 18 <laughs> different Twitter accounts and be able to broadcast from every single one at your leisure. That's cool. And just through the basic interface that's built into the app. Nothing, exactly, Nothing yeah. tricky in the back end. Log out and log back in with a new account and you're good. Log out, log in. Easy, that always fixes it. Yeah. and. So that's a couple other questions here. How does Meerkat tweet without a user profile? You can't, right? You have to be assigned into Twitter. Y you do, yeah. How does Meerkat tweet without? Uh, without, I'm guessing that's user profile. User profile. Hmm. Um, yeah. So well, we manage our own Twitter account, and then we have a Meerkat uh, uh, Meerkat account <laughs> at Meerkat Meerkat account uh, <laughs> at that's Meerkat connected app, to our right. Twitter. But um, for instance, in the case of today, I was watching Chase through the app Meerkat account, and I retweeted directly from the stream. And that's how it got pushed out to Twitter and, and how we got such a nice audience. For yeah, this. now there's 111 people paying attention Beautiful. to what it is that we're talking about right now. Yeah, now I have a question. I did see some people coming up through the, the here using hashtags. I saw the hashtag catch. I've been seeing a few other ones. And I know yeah. that there are some integrations of, of other like third-party systems within Meerkat to help people maximize it. So do you I know, have we're anything? We're lucky, right? Yeah, we're lucky, right? <laughs> but do you have anything to say about these people who are using the hashtags and any of the other the other logic there in the, the hashtags and third party applications? Yeah, so the hashtag that's that's most relevant is catch, mm -hmm. K-A-T-C-H. And uh, so first of all I want to say we're like really fortunate because you know only whatever it is, 34, 35 days in uh, with the number of users we have, we have a whole community of third-party developers yeah. that's building on top of this. It's beautiful. There was another product that was pushed out yesterday. I think we have close to 11 different products that have been that have been pushed nice. live wow. on top of Meerkat um, without us even having an open API at this point. <laughs> so there was one yesterday that was Meerkatalytics, and it's a way to go in and see exactly what's happened in all of your streams. 
which is awesome because it helps you kind of gauge how to best engage your audience. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, in, in terms of catch, these guys developed catch, and uh, originally what it was was insert hashtag catch into your caption, and what they will do is they will upload your video to YouTube, and they will post a tweet back to you with the link to the YouTube video. Wow. Whoa. So what it did is it gave the, it gave the person streaming full control, right? The people watching were posting the hashtag, or if they were, it wasn't doing anything. But the person streaming could decide, hey, this is going to be awesome. I want this to go on YouTube, and I want the link available to all my audience. And they would just do it. Uh, they've since developed it so that if you're watching and you comment with Catch, Catch will send the person streaming a tweet that says, your audience has requested to see this on YouTube, retweet or reply with hashtag Catch, and we'll post it to YouTube and post it back into the, back into the replies. Whoa. That's amazing. So, so it now empowers the audience to at least come forward and ask the person streaming and say, hey, look, this is awesome. We want to see this on YouTube. Please, will you put it up there? We still want to empower the person that initiated the stream, and we want to make them feel comfortable, and we don't want them to feel as though anything that happened in the stream would necessarily be saved for later without, without their acknowledgment. Got it. But we do want to provide a way, and Catch wants to provide a way, right, for yep. the audience to to give this power to the streamer, so, which is awesome. So I've thank been, you guys. Oh yeah, I've been looking over your shoulder while you were giving that answer, and there's this this stream that the folks <laughs> at home is. are seeing right now, and there some of the questions I thought it was that were interesting. One was, why aren't you broadcasting in 16.9, oh. Chase? <laughs> uh -oh. And uh. you, you can, but what happens is the the screen shortens up and then the tweets are directly over the top of what you're yep. broadcasting. You get to see fewer of them. And so talk to me about the format, just like the consideration here. This is just, this is sure. different than so 69. We had a product uh, that was launched in the end of 2013 called Yevo. Mm -hmm. The whole thing was oriented horizontally. All the UI was horizontal. We expected you to hold it horizontally. Mm -hmm. We would scoff at people that were Streaming, holding the phone vertically, we would say as you're doing it all wrong. And a director, yeah. it's very non-intuitive to do this, yeah. except as soon as this thing launched, and I was just, wow, it's obvious this is exactly yeah. how it's supposed to be. So, so we, you know, we were sending out our our user base the uh, vertical video syndrome uh, YouTube video. I don't know if you've seen it. Oh it's, yeah, it's mm -hmm. hilarious. Hilarious. And we were saying you guys are doing it all wrong, and we realized that when you're trying to usher in this this new experience and this new medium. You have to do it in a way that's most natural for people. Yeah. And turning their phone horizontally while getting used to live participatory video, that th th it wasn't going to work. Two you things. It's like walking and chewing gum at the same time. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's yeah. Exactly. Impossible. No, you need to hold your phone like this. You need to press stream. You need to see people watching, and then you need to start engaging them, and it has to feel comfortable for you. Yeah. And again, there's a handful of questions that I'm watching come in. I'd like to ask a couple of sure, questions. Yeah. Uh, I saw one from Chris saying, "Why the name Meerkat?" So the, the name Meerkat originated, uh, the reason is because Meerkat is an inherently very social animal, yeah. right? And it's also adorable. And uh, good on a they always run around together. <laughs> and and it, we thought that the app was like a relatively good, or the Meerkat was a good personification of the app. Yeah. Animalcation, however yeah. the word is supposed to work. <laughs> um, and so that's why... That's why it's called meerkat. It's also it's playful. It's it is. cute. Mm -hmm. It's snuggly. You also have lemmings, but lemmings really weren't. <laughs> that wouldn't have been a good uh, a good that name for work. the app. As social Great. as they are. Right. Awesome. Um, Ryan, will there be a way to block trolls? Ask. It's just Jenny. Yes. So uh, right now we're working on all of our community management and, and reporting features within the app. Currently, you can uh, flag a person that's streaming, and at a certain number of flags, we review it, and then we. We, d we do have the ability to take it down if it is something that's uh, offending a lot of people or harmful or a crime. Sure. Uh, as far as trolls within within the stream that are commenting, I don't I know don't if we any, have any I trolls have, have, right now. No. I haven't seen, I literally haven't seen a troll. Yep. Maybe it's because I'm so loved. <laughs> for, for I think that's not true, obviously. <laughs> but generally speaking, like I've, it's just been, like because it's there's so much other activity that a troll, you just don't engage with the troll. And right. I mean, so for now, you can send an email to hello at meerkatapp.co. Sure. Let us know if there's a problem. We'll review to the best of our ability. Most of the comments are captured in Twitter. We can review there. We certainly want it to be a place where people are comfortable. I mean, I keep talking about being comfortable. Yes. But when you're when you're dealing with live and you're pressing a button and then you see people's faces and they're looking yeah, at you. It's scary. You, you, it is. Yeah. You do feel a bit vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So we, we want it to be a comfortable place where people feel like they can you know share information and exchange mm -hmm. and share experiences and and participate with each other. 
w w you know, without the trolling. So without the trolling, yeah. There's 120 people. No one's talking smack right now. Thank That's you so good. much. Uh, we are loved, says uh, Albert. Um, Meerkat equals a new level of freedom, says nice. Hafodo. That's so true. Cool. And, yeah. And and I think the uh, just one point okay. that I would underscore um, and I'd like to hear from you is the ability to make this work for you, to be able to, as an engagement tool with people who are interested in the same sort of things you're interested in, yeah. both as a streamer, a broadcaster, and as a, a consumer of those streams. Yeah, so, you know, any social media platform from, you know, MySpace and earlier on aims to just connect people uh, faster and, and in, a, in, a, in a closer, more intimate way, right? Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. So the value here, whether you're a politician, whether you're an artist that, that's kind of uh, sharing his or her process, whether you're a coach that's streaming a practice, whether you're a, whether you're a you know, world famous musician that just wants to kind of get the feedback of your fans, it doesn't matter. The, the app does the same thing emotionally, I think, across all different use cases and all different types of people. And what it does is it builds a real tangible relationship in a way that we haven't seen on other platforms, yeah. right? It's, so for what it's worth, that's the same platform that when we built Creative Live, you know, four four and a half years ago, that we were looking to tap into is the engagement part, the communication, the relationship mm -hmm. that the broadcaster, or in this case, Creative Live, has with the people who are interested in learning or participating, coming along for the ride, and that like, I don't know, I, I, you you folks at home can tell us how do you feel? You are <coughs> behind the scenes now as we're talking about this in real time, and, and I'm sure, I'm hoping that you feel a sense of access in a way that you wouldn't otherwise have. Right, so l let me use an example that's hopefully easily relatable. Great. Right, in terms of where we think this is going, mm -hmm. in terms of the evolution of social media. So, you're, you're in the grocery store, you're, you're about to buy whatever, your milk and eggs, and you see the cover of People Magazine. And uh, g give me a, like a famous, give me some sort of esteemed celebrity. George Clooney. George Clooney. Your favorite. <laughs> All right, so George Clooney, this is, that's gonna be a funny one uh, for the sake of this example, but sure. George Clooney is on the cover of People Magazine. And you're like, wow, that's George Clooney. And yeah, I've seen him in the movies and I know what he looks like. And I don't know what he really sounds like to talk to in person, but I, you know, I, I see him on these magazines and he's, He's a distant entity at that point, right? Um, then in the advent of Instagram, it, it, we had a community of, of photographers and people that were becoming photographers, you know, to an extent, I don't know, hopefully. Oh, no, Are you okay no. with me saying oh, that? By all means, <laughs> all please. Right. Um, Instagram g g empowered everybody to feel as though they were a photographer and, and share images in an open community, right? Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, George Clooney is sitting drinking coffee at the cafe taking a photo of himself with his iPhone, the iPhone that I have in my pocket as I'm looking at this photo at work, right? And all of a sudden, I feel a relationship between George Clooney and myself, right? Because I know that what he did is something that I do every day, which is pick up my phone, take a photo, and then the share with The celebrities, they're just like us. That is actually a page in People Magazine. I don't know if... Yes. They're, they're just like yeah, us, really? They, yeah, here's George Clooney oh, buying toilet paper. He drinks coffee like I do. <laughs> right. But the, the, the point is, it, it leveled up the rest of the community, yeah. okay? We're all empowered to contribute this kind of content now and share it with each other. And they're, they, it, it erased some of the boundaries, you know, that were between me and that People magazine cover. And by the way, this is just for sake of example. This all is right? great, yeah. no, this um, is great. Then you have Snapchat, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm skipping over a couple others, not that they're insignificant, sure. but just for the purpose of this. Then you have Snapchat. Snapchat uh, introduced this ephemeral medium, which was totally raw and it was, it was exactly what you see is what you get, mm -hmm. right? Yep. There was really no way of editing it aside from adding like, you know, big block text and drawing on it with uh, you know bright red and blue and gr and green marker. That's it. Okay. So, all of a sudden, George Clooney's on Snapchat, right? He's posting Snapchat stories. Y you see him at his house. He's holding the phone up. It looks kind of awkward. The the video isn't. There's no filter on it. You can now, but at that point, there was no filter on it. Um, you saw George Clooney for, for the way that he saw himself as he was looking into the camera at that point, Eating right? Eating cereal in the morning. Yeah. yeah, and all of a sudden you post it and you get a push notification in your pocket because George Clooney decided to post a story on Snapchat and you were immediately notified of that. That's, that's the next step in terms of building the relationship and making people feel connected, right? right? 
Now, yeah, here we are. enter, to, enter to Meerkat. Meerkat. Enter Meerkat, and George Clooney is, is uh, on the set of a movie, and he pops open Meerkat, and he presses stream, and all of a sudden, everybody that cares about George Clooney is in there, and they're asking him questions, and he's answering them, and they're saying, oh, let's check out that part of the set, and he's like, okay. And, and as I mentioned before, the people that are watching are now the directors. He's the actor, obviously he's also an actor. But in terms of the dynamic of, of, of uh, the social interaction, they're controlling what they're consuming that he's part of. Yep. And so now, go back to the time when you saw him on the cover of People magazine, did you ever think that you were gonna be able to actually interact directly with him and control how he interacted back with you? And that's where we see social media going, right? It's becoming more participatory. It's, it's about everybody together. It's not just about one person throwing a piece of content over the wall and seeing how people react. That's an old paradigm, in our opinion. Yeah, yeah. and to be able to, like that's the, f I, I think the, the being able to poke something and have it respond. Yeah. And so, I think George Clooney is a bad example. Bad there, example. I'm not poking George Clooney. George Clooney, Clooney was <laughs> a weird example, and it, for me too. Yeah. But, you know, you for see. sure. For yeah, sure. but it's okay. But you know, and again, I'm I'm reading questions as we're talking here, uh, Ryan and and Chris about um, as this next level access. There's no requirements for broadcasting. You don't have to have a license from the FCC. Mm -hmm. This is just you're on the go, and and it's authentic. It's in the moment in a way that nothing really has been before. Right. And we think that authenticity is pretty key. It's pretty core to what we're doing. Um, yeah, Sweet. beautiful. Love it. I love. I'll end with that comment there that just came up. That live video humanizes people. I really like the way that sums it up. One hundred percent. Yeah. The the thing that we love about Meerkat is that whatever you see on the other side of the Meerkat it is exactly what's there. Totally. Right. There yeah. can be no smoke and mirrors about it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So it doesn't matter if. It doesn't matter if you know the 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 White House goes live through the White House Twitter handle. What you're going to see is an actual person that's there in the White House, and you're going to experience it for what it is, right? For sure. And and we get to t like see who's watching us. Like there you go, Brad, Brad Laney is co-founder and president of blah blah blah. Oh hey blah. Brad. Well, yeah, I know Brad. We, we got Tim Seawos. We've got uh, who's in the purple egg there? <laughs> Tao Wong. We've got Ricardo. We've got what's up, Ricardo? B. Doer. Uh, we've got Kyle, Kyle Reed. Reed. Very yeah, nice. It's, wow. It's, you know. 128 people are watching us yeah, right now. Right this Concurrently. second. Concurrently. Concurrent. Geo, what's up, Geo? Um, lady. All right. Beautiful. So again, there are human beings behind this. And like you said, you think you said it well, no smoke and mirrors. What you see mm -hmm. is what you get. Yeah, exactly. Now back to you, Chris. All right. Well, hey, this has been great having you here, Ryan. Really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. For people who want to know more about you, any questions we couldn't get to, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, so, well, the questions about the trolling, by the way, yeah. I'm going to direct to uh, hello away. at meerkatapp.co. Okay, great, great. Otherwise, Twitter is the fastest way to reach me. And my Twitter handle is Ryan P. Cooley. Awesome. Right and for all the folks who are new to Creative Live, um, we offer... We have more than 10,000 hours of content. The world's best creators, photographers, filmmakers, designers, uh, audio engineers, entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. crafters, makers. And you can come and watch 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We have these people broadcasting for free on our platform. And check it out. Um, we do a lot more than just updating people on the newest, coolest technology here at Meerkat. Um, if there's, there should be something there for everybody. So check it out. And any, any final words? No final words. If you've been enjoying this live video, absolutely go to creativelive.com to see more. But for right now, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.